Okay, in this short video, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the Diffrac Eva software package. I'm going to launch it just by clicking on this button down here on my taskbar for Diffrac Eva. And as it launches, you'll see this uh, uh, display up here on the screen. If you get an error message at this point um, telling you that the software can't find the license dongle, you just need to send me an email at xrd at sheffield.ac.uk and I will forward you instructions for how to solve that. Okay, so Eva's now loaded and we can see on the screen here, it looks quite complicated straight from the beginning. Um, so there's various different panels here around the outside of the screen. On the left, we have the data command. At the bottom here on the left, we have data tree and then the data property window down here on the bottom right. Now, the role of these will, should become more clear as we proceed. Um, but for me personally, one thing I will say at this point is that I prefer this data property window to be a bit bigger. And so what I do is just click on the top of it and then drag it off the bottom. And then we can scoot it onto the right hand side of the screen just by hovering over the right hand arrow there. And you can see that has now taken up quite a lot of the screen. So I'm going to just hover over the edge and drag it with the left mouse button so it doesn't take up so much space. But it's a bit bigger than it was before. The gray area in the center here is where our diffraction data will be um, presented once we actually load some in. Some other navigation tips in the view menu, you can change the skin. Uh, if you want the Brooker blue, you can go for that, or you can have the Brooker light blue that I prefer. Under help, you have a settings option. And in here, you can change the default settings for just about anything in the software. So you can change the number of decimal places, um, it can refer to uh, databases, um, colors, if you want things set up in a different way, um, and properties for individual things. You name it, you can probably find it in here if you want if you want or need to customize it. So we'll leave that at the default for now. So what we really want to do, I guess, is actually load in some data. So to do this, we press this blank page button here, new, for create a new document. And then from the data command uh, menu on the left here, we can now import from data files. <coughs> okay, so you can see here that I already have one data file ready to go, this control file. Um, we can load data from any of our instruments into EVA for analysis. If you hover over the measurement files uh, menu here, the BRML files are what we get from the Brooker D2 phaser. Um, raw files from the Siemens D5000s will also go straight in here. Um, we can also import data from the Stoies. It's a little bit more involved in that you have to export the data in WinXPOW in raw data handling to a Philips UDF format and then use POW DLL to convert the UDF file into a Brooker or Siemens raw file. Um, it's a, just a two-step process, so it's not too arduous if you really want to use either. So let's go ahead and open up our control file. So this was collected on the D5000, so it's a raw file. And you can see the data presented here now in that central window. So um, things we can edit. Well, you can see automatically on the bottom there is put on a dotted line where it thinks the background is. That's quite handy. Um, but in the data properties window on the right, we can edit that. So you can see here background display original plus background. Um, you can background subtract it if you like it. Um, just click somewhere else and you can see it's got rid of the background. And we can also just look at the original measurement, which I tend to prefer. Um, so we can see the data as it was. You can also see all the different parameters that are recorded, particularly from the D2, um, where the data is in the BRML format. This will be populated with all the parameters from your particular um, experiment. We can also change the views uh, and how um, we um, look at the data down here in the data tree by clicking views and then two theta view. And now in the data properties window, we can see all the parameters that you might ever need to change um, to affect how this looks. And so if you want to look at a particular exact angular range, um, we can see the full range here, 15 to 90 degrees under zoom, but we could change that 
say to 15 to 70 and it would update automatically. If you scroll down you can also change the legend format up here so you can see at the moment it's not very big. You can change all the colors and the font sizes as well there so you might say we want that to be a bit bigger so people could actually read it. Um, and that goes for the font type, um, italics, understrikes, the whole lot. You can change pretty much everything there. One other thing you might want to change while you're here as well, actually, are the axes. You can see the default axis, 2 theta, coupled 2 theta over theta, um, wavelength equals 1.5406. You know, it's a it's a bit long-winded. It doesn't necessarily need to say that much. Also, in this data property view, uh, we can change um, the uh, parameters that are displayed. So you can see the parameters that are chosen, and then what is actually going to be displayed. And so for us, you can see it's going to say the x scale. Well, that's two theta, plus all this other stuff here. If you want to edit stuff here, you can um, add in things, or we can just take it away with a delete. So I'm going to get rid of that x scale. And now when I click somewhere else, it's only going to say 2 theta, for example, on my x axis. We could change this to whatever we wanted, actually. So you can just type in there as well. Typically, anything that's bolded here, um, you can edit um, by clicking on it and typing in something else. OK, so I might give that more of a descriptive um, title now. Turn it back to 2 theta. So. Um, one other thing we should talk about while we're, we're going over the basics of EVA is to click onto the um, control raw entry down here in the data tree. So this is our raw data file that we're looking at. Um, we can see on the data command uh, window at the bottom here various tools that allow us to influence the data, how it's presented, and to analyze it in a bit more detail. So one thing we can do um, that we should look at, obviously, is search match and see how the phase analysis works. So I'll click on that, and that opens another window up. Now, this one's a, a floating window that's always on top, so it's a bit tricky. So this is really good if you've got two monitors, um, and you can just scoot that out of the way. Uh, what we need to do, quite often, as you can see at the top of this search match window, it says database rebuild needed. If it says that, just click the rebuild button, and it will rebuild the database, whatever that happens to mean. And once it's finished, we can start to build our uh, list for the, the search match process. If you happen to know what's in the sample, you can go to chemical filter, and you can choose the elements. You can see the, the key at the bottom here, red for discarded, i.e. not included in the search, uh, blue for kind of optional things, at least one of which must be present, and green for mandatory things, so things that must definitely be there. So what I tend to do, just right click somewhere and say select all, and then right click, change, discarded. And so that'll switch everything off. Um, so no elements are allowed. And then I can just click on uh, the, the screen and you can see it toggling through. So if I turn those back to red, uh, click somewhere off the table, and then we can click on each individual atom and turn them off or to at least one or mandatory and just toggle through the flags much like you would do in the ICDD software if you've used that. Um, okay so you can pick the elements that are in your sample um, and obviously XRD is not a black box technique so if you do have any elemental information about your sample then it's a great idea to enter it at this stage. For me and the material that I'm looking at here I don't actually know anything about it so I'm just going to click reset and have everything as optional apart from deuterium. Uh, the database filter will let you search uh, through uh, various parameters. Um, you can look for the color of things, but it's not very, certainly for the crystallography open database, it's not very extensive options here. But that's not too big a, a deal. So what we want to do for the phase analysis is just go to the candidate list, and then we can um, search match over the whole data range. We can look for a particular sub-range if we just want to look for peaks within a certain angular range. So I'm going to say whole range. And then we can also look at various criteria for um, how it's going to select patterns. So the standard most common setting here would be neutral. 
but if you're looking for things where you know you're just looking for simple patterns you could say one favor simple pattern or otherwise favor a complex pattern uh, but for us I'm, I'm going to go for neutral and that's it that's all you have to do just click search and it will go ahead and do the search um, once it's found a whole load of things according to the filters it'll then look to see what matches and it'll give you a list and you can see um, they're ranked by uh, the results are ranked by this figure of merit much like the PDF would and you see the top entry here is silica great okay if I scoot this out of the way you can see yeah actually silica does look like a decent match for quite a lot of the peaks in my diffraction pattern so I'm pretty happy with that so I'm going to click the tick button next to that to accept it uh, we can use the box we can use the up and down arrows to select between different cards and you can see them being highlighted in the background there um, it's a pretty uh, good bet that there's calcite in this sample as well and you see that the match is pretty reasonable for calcite so yeah I'm going to accept that one as well okay after that uh, things get a bit less clear and there's obviously now a lot of duplication so what I want to do is um, move those uh, accepted peaks out of the way uh, we've dealt with those we want to move on so to do that in EVA we go to the selected candidates window and now you can see the two entries I've accepted here in red and blue so what we want to do is click on residual and you can see this shaded area around the red peaks is included here in the background so this is basically saying okay we've ex we've, we've dealt with this part of the, or these parts of the pattern so what I want to do you can see this is actually far too broad uh, we can turn this down a bit uh, so move this slider down and you can see that's uh, narrowing in over the peak itself and then I'm going to say apply and then I'm going to go to the blue one and do something similar that doesn't look so bad um, so just scoot that down a little bit and apply and you can see the peaks have become kind of shaded they've become what they call ghost peaks now so these ones are accepted and now if we go back to the candidate list again um, move this back over if I click search now it should just search on the peaks that haven't been identified so far and there's some uh, false positives in there you still see silica and the calcite phase up at the top but we can also now see that the fifth entry down here is Portlandite which gives us a good match to quite a few of the smaller peaks and so we could accept that and keep on repeating the process until we've identified all of the, the phases in the sample we'll have another video to look at this in a lot more depth um, later on um, but for now I'll just close this I'm going to say that I'm finished even though you can see clearly there are still peaks here um, so now what we need to do you can see the ghost peaks are still shaded if I right click residual scan restore all visible scans then you can see things look back to normal um, we can also turn the background on and off if you prefer I've got the original measurement setting here but we could turn the background off so it would display a little bit differently if you prefer that as I say you can mess around with things um, to your heart's content once you've finished you've got the analysis the, the, done it to, to your content and you want to get a copy of this picture out you just need to hover over this icon at the end of the bar here copy view picture to clipboard and if you take it as a bitmap I've ten, I tend to find those are higher quality so copy as bitmap to clipboard and then you can just paste what you've got straight into Word or PowerPoint and, and so on one other neat thing with Eva is you can also then go file save as and you can save a document file um, so we could say this is say test and this .eva file can be opened later on in EVA and it will restore all the settings and all the analyses um, your current sort of state of progress um, back to where you were um, and so you can continue your work at a later time so that's really handy as well